Welcome back, fight fans. Welcome back. Welcome back. Let's just dig right into it. Errol Spence Jr. is overhyped and overrated. Yes, Errol Spence Jr. is an elite level body puncher. Errol Spence Jr. is a very good fighter for the welterweight division, but he's not an elite overall fighter. And we're going to break down exactly why that is and why we believe so. Now, the number one thing that I get from a lot of, you know, Errol Spence Jr. fans in any type of debate is they like to state that they like to make a comparison when it comes to Mikey Garcia's opponent and his opponents. And so I just kind of want to break that down just to show everyone that if you if you do your research, if you do your understanding, if you really know boxing as a whole and you're not just a casual looking at things on the outside and you truly know the sport in, of, of boxing for what it is, then you will understand that he has been overhyped he has been overblown although he's a very good fighter you know you're going to hear a lot of people say oh the ibfp bashes errol spence i'm not bashing errol spence i can frankly tell you errol spence jr is a very good fighter he's very talented he has elite level body punching he's a good fighter i do not have any bias towards errol spence jr at all but the fact that he's so overhyped we have to expose that that's what we do and so what i'm going to do at this point is give you the facts of why he's overhyped and you know a lot of people like to refer back to saying that errol spence jr you know he stopped adrian broner in sparring he stopped adrian broner in sparring that is their number one thing when they talk about what mikey garcia did against adrian broner when they talk about what manny pacquiao did against Adrian Broner they said well Errol Spence Jr. stopped Adrian Broner in, in sparring he he laid Adrian Broner flat on his back he dominated and destroyed Adrian Broner this is what you get from these Errol Spence Jr. fans in any debate so we did a little fact checking and let's just be honest and unbiased about it um Adrian Broner recently did it um not recently but he did an interview and basically in this interview he comes out and he speaks on this particular situation and he did an interview with fighthype.com and about him actually being wobbled in sparring not knocked out so adrian broner was never knocked out adrian broner was never sleep on the canvas adrian broner never touched the canvas adrian broner was woozy was wobbled from errol spence jr but never knocked out. So that's the first statement of fact. This next statement of fact, and, and not only do we get this from Adrian Broner, we get this from witnesses such as a Freddie Roach, who's also done interviews with Fight Hype, stating these exact same facts. So let's just be honest and unbiased when we assess this. And another thing is Adrian Broner, this is a direct statement from Adrian Broner too. And, and he states, I was a 130 pound fighter. He was fighting 152 pounds. He caught me with a good shot every time we spar it's real physical he caught me with a left hand he hurt me and the bell rung it's as simple as that folks so yes he hurt adrian broner with a good shot but these guys spar multiple times so you have to be honest and unbiased when you break this down you talk about all the people who says mikey garcia can't go past four or five rounds with errol spence jr but Adrian Broner spars with him on a consistent basis, and he never knocked that Adrian Broner. And not only that, Errol Spence Jr. weight bullied that fight because even in sparring, he was vastly bigger than Adrian Broner and comes out bragging about it. Talking about it like he's the man, you have all these Errol Spence Jr. groupies and fanboys. And I'm going to call them groupies because when you see a fighter and you know that he's extremely large coming into a sparring and a guy's bragging on sparring rather than the actual fight that's a problem you're a groupie if you truly believe that's a fair analysis of how good he would do against adrian broner because if we're honest and unbiased and errol spence jr fought adrian broner in an actual fight i think errol spence jr would win because adrian broner doesn't let his hands go i think Adrian Broner would go to full 12 rounds and survive because Adrian Broner is going to run that entire fight. We've never seen Errol Spence Jr. fight someone that will run the entire fight. Everyone's Errol Spence Jr. has fought, has fought catered and tailor-made to his style as far as sitting in the pocket for too long and taking too much punishment. Adrian Broner will not do this. That's why Adrian Broner survived against Manny Pacquiao. That's why Adrian Broner survived against Mikey Garcia. You have to understand that's the type of fighter that Adrian Broner is. He's never been the same since the Marcos El Chino Maidana fight. Now, another thing that the Errol Spence Jr. fanboys comes out and say, well, you know, he beat up Floyd Mayweather Jr. in sparring. 
he beat up Floyd Mayweather Jr. in sparring. And Freddie Roach spoke on that as well. And he quote he was quoted as saying, and this is on Fight Hub TV, in which uh, Freddie Roach did this interview. And he basically comes out and states that, hey, he gave Floyd a mouse under his eye. And so if for all you novice who don't understand what a mouse under the eye is, that's either a small bruise or a small cut right under the eye. That's what that is. The, the terminology that all these, you know, Errol Spence Jr. groupies and fanboys like to use is, is that he didn't give him a mouse under his eye. He gave him a full blown black eye and hurt and beat up Floyd Mayweather in sparring. So every time you hear these stories, they get exaggerated even more and more and more. They say, well, look, since he dominated Floyd Mayweather, what, you, what makes you think that he can't outbox? That proves that Errol Spence Jr. has boxing skills. First of all, he didn't dominate Floyd Mayweather. He came in there outweighing Floyd Mayweather by at least 20 pounds. That's what he did. He not only did he come in there outweighing him by at least 20 pounds, he came in there supremely motivated, caught him with a good shot and left a mouse under his eye. Now, so let me expose this as well. So, yes, you did leave a mouse under Floyd Mayweather's eye. And yes, you did hurt Adrian Broner. You've done two things in sparring that he's extremely proud about. So let me dissect those. Let's find the common opponent here. And the common opponent is Marcos Maidana. Marcos Maidana hit Floyd right on the right in the mouth, swelled up his entire lip. When they fought, they fought two times. And when he bust him in the mouth, swelled up his entire lip at the press conference, Floyd was having trouble talking clearly. He was disappointed in his performance because he allowed himself to get hit with a good shot. He stated that at the press conference. Let's be unbiased. His mouth was extremely swollen. So if we look at it and honestly unbiasedly, we understand that Floyd Mayweather Jr. got hit with a good shot from Marco Celcino Maidana. That's what he did. That's what happened. So Marcos Maidana did equivalent to what Errol Spence Jr. did and then some. Because not only do that, he gave Floyd Mayweather Jr. a very rough first fight. So whether whoever, however you see that fight going or ha whoever you have winning or whatever the situation is, you know that it was at least a competitive fight. You know it was at least a difficult fight for Floyd. Even if you say that Floyd won that fight every round and they were just close rounds, you at least know that it was competitive. Some people feel Marcos Maidana won that first fight. I'm not even going as far as getting into that. I'm simply saying is... Marcos Maidana gave him a very difficult and challenging fight, made it completely uncomfortable for Floyd. And in another fight with Floyd, he swelled up his lip dramatically and did a lot more than leaving a little mouse under Floyd's eye. So if you're going to give Errol Spence Jr. credit for sparring, why is no one giving, you know, Marcos Maidana any credit for doing that great work against Floyd Mayweather? No one gives him credit for that. Then you turn around and say Marcos Maidana destroyed Adrian Broner. He did a lot more than have him wobbled on his feet. He seriously hurt Adrian Broner. He hurt Adrian Broner to the point that Adrian Broner was basically being carried out almost of the arena. Adrian Broner has never fought the same since that fight. And Adrian Broner had never looked as bad in the fight that he did against Marcos Maidana. So Marcos Maidana outclassed Errol Spence Jr. in two actual fights rather than two sparring sessions against the same two guys this should under this should let you know that these fanboys have hyped errol spence jr up to the point of no return see what you don't understand is now that people are believing in this myth in errol spence jr that he's invincible that he's unbreakable that he can't be beat and so then we look at we look a little bit deeper so after this then errol spence jr comes and he fights Kell Brook, who was coming off a knockout loss to Triple G and an eye surgery. So a guy like this who's already damaged goods, you win your first world title off a guy who's damaged fucking goods. Let's be honest. Kell Brook was not the same. So then after he fights Kell Brook, then he moves on to the Lamont Petersons of the world, who's a blown up 140 pounder who has no chance to stop him or beat him in any kind of way. A C-level Lamont Peterson who's past his best days. So so that's who he beat. Then he comes out and beats a tomato can and a Carlos Ocampo. And so now he's looking to fight Mikey Garcia. And what do people do? Jump right back on his coattail and say, no, he's unbeatable. He can't be hurt. He can't be beat. He's been hyped. 
He's been overblown, overrated, and overstated. Errol Spence Jr. is not who you think he is. Whether he, you know, whether he wins or loses against Mikey Garcia, he will be exposed. And then even after the Mikey Garcia fight, there's a reason why Errol Spence Jr. is in no rush to fight a Terrence Bud Crawford, an elite welterweight with elite level skills, a pound for pound fighter. There's a reason why he said he would rather take an easy road than fight a Terrence Bud Crawford. You have to understand, he's looking at Mikey Garcia. Yes, we know Mikey called him out, but he didn't have to accept. But at the same time, Terrence Crawford called him out and he didn't accept. Exactly. That's for the that's for the Errol Spence Jr. groupies who thinks that he's unstoppable and invincible. For Errol Spence Jr.'s groupies sake, he better destroy Mikey Garcia in four or five rounds, because if he doesn't. Then the whole world will be shocked, but I won't because I understand Errol Spence Jr.'s flaws in his limitations. I understand that his poor head movement is going to cost him at some point. I just believe it's going to come a lot earlier than most. I believe Mikey Garcia will be the first to exploit that. But if we're looking honestly on an unbiased, it's already been ex exposed and exploited by Kell Brook. Look at the first six rounds. Kell Brook is not half the fighter that Mikey Garcia is. We know this. Kell Brook is the same guy who barely beat Sean Porter. And a lot of people felt like he didn't deserve that win and beat a lot of other tomato cans. He had no other top names on his resume. So let's be honest on that. You know, Kell Brook does not have dimensions to his game. He's never been a pound for pound fighter. He's never been an elite level fighter, but yet people praise him like he has. We just seen a fight with Chris Algieri struggling, struggling, getting beat up at times and leaving the fight with a huge black eye on his return. And that's the same guy that Errol Spence Jr. said was his best win come on the same guy who's dropped multiple times by Manny Pacquiao but that's your best win we've never seen Errol Spence Jr. in there with elite competition we've never seen Errol Spence Jr. in there take shots as well as he's able to give them and that is going to be his demise once again unbiased as always is the IBFP please share like and you must absolutely subscribe